glasses. The red glasses, yes. But I've seen them with him more often than not, so they might be surgically attached, I'm not sure. He's got long hair and he's got red sunglasses. These are meant for like snowboarding, um, to cut the glare of the snow uh, from your eyes. But so I was just like, I kind of like took a gamble. I was like, man, this is, I would, it would be really pretentious if I just wore these all the time. And then I thought about it, ah, fuck it. And I just got them. And um, I've been wearing them ever since. And when, well, then when you wear r red colored, like rose colored sunglasses everywhere you go, it makes you happier. It does, it genuinely, like, psychologically, it makes me like a happier, warmer person, and I need that sometimes. And at one moment, I was cutting the stencil out, and the razor br blade broke in half, and a blade chunk bounced up, bounced off of, like, my eye, and then landed back on the table in front of me, and I had this moment where I was just, like, freezing, I was like, my life is over, I'm not gonna be able to see ever again, and I, like, opened my eyes, and there's no blood. It's fine. So now whenever I'm, you know, I always have these just on top of my head. So in the moment when I'm like, that's right, I don't want to ruin my career. <laughs> right there. He's very opinionated. He likes to throw his opinion out there. He is very musical, very gifted in any art form for that matter. So I, first and foremost, am president of Student Art League and the Carlston Gallery Student Advisory Committee. After that, I also work with 90FM as both a volunteer and a radio DJ. Right now it's from 12 to 2 on Fridays. And other than that, uh, I also have a local band, uh, sound committee that I'm a part of. Well, he joined shortly after I taught him how to play bass the same year we met. And, and he left for a little bit for for school and then he came back and we've been playing since then I want to say about about two years. Basically music kicked off like our friendship together because I've like I know he's very very into art and like music and everything art but like for me personally I'm like into like music exclusively as art like I've never really been a painter or anything or any kind of sculptor of any sort. I was I was largely like making work I think as musicians we all just kind of make our own music and then but as like band members we come together and we share it, we share it with one another and we see how we can bounce those ideas off of each other. We all have very different tastes in music, but when we come together, we, we try and um, find that middle ground, that happy medium for all of us. So I think I make music on my own, to my own devices. I make music that's very spacey, that informs my artwork, and my artwork is informed by it. And it's just, you know, it's, that's just my artistic process. It's the same thing I would do if I was painting. But instead of working on a canvas, I'm working on a fretboard. And I know that's that's the composition. It's the same thing. Painting and music, any sort of art form, it's all the same thing. It's all different translations of one another. That's a funny story. So, when I was a freshman, we had this gallery director. Her name was uh, Karen Heft. And she was very small, very small old woman, very set on retiring soon. And um, you know, she'd, <laughs> she'd walk around and she, she had this bite to her because she'd been through all of the bullshit you can imagine. I started working as a gallery guard in, in the Carlston Gallery. And after knowing me, having about like 30 minutes of face time with me, she pulled me aside as this this small, angry woman, this tall, young freshman, and said, okay, I've got these two organizations. They only have two officers right now, not a lot of members. Now I want you to take these positions. And I know you're not stupid enough to pass up an opportunity like this because I know how you chased after this job. 
And so I took that to heart and I, uh, I made it happen. You know, um, I think he does a great job at um, being head of two student groups at the same time. I don't want to see his work suffer because of that. And I know it's a lot of work. It's, you know, running any sort of bureaucratic endeavor, whether it's faculty or staff or student, is a bit like herding cats at times. Student Art League, in that role within the whole college, it caters to the 2D artists just because of where it's positioned. And I view it as a way for students to supplement their education. So we come in, we bring in visiting artists, we host uh, weekly life drawing sessions every Monday, and we give students a chance to sell their work and put their work out there and to have a say in what happens in the school. And I think that's really, really important. I just had a chat with him the other day, um, wondering if he might consider running for an SGA office because I think he would serve the student body in the department really quite well. He's helped to represent us going to SGA looking for funding for our gallery, the Edna Carlston um, Gallery, and uh, he's done a great job at representing us that way. So I would eventually like to see him, you know, go on to some slightly greater things uh, in SGA and really represent the students here, you know, even in a stronger fashion. Um. I think his artwork is very good. I can tell like his artwork is very, very well done and there's definitely like deeper meanings behind it. Uh, it's definitely not cliche artwork, like, oh, this is gonna look nice on my wall. Like it's artwork you have to stand and like think about a lot of times. I've seen a real growth, not only in the technical ability, thinking in terms of um, um, process, so not just about, you know, seeing an object and drawing an object, but what I'm more interested in the students learning is what they do with these forms once they're able to draw them, and that's where he's at now in terms of painting and drawing is he's got the ability, he's got the technical wherewithal, and now it's the conceptual aspect of things that he's really working on. What are, what are the ideas he wants to delve into with the work? I think I'm kind of an interesting case in that I don't really take inspiration from a lot of corporeal things. Like, um, you know, it's, it's not like there's a girl or there's, you know, some traumatic event in my life. Usually it's, um, it's a state of being, actually. I mean, it's, it's not very um, space-based or, uh, you know, it's not, a, it's not keyed into a real-life thing. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with color, if, if we really want to talk about things that do inspire me. I, I think a lot of what my job is as a painter is to understand color and to feel color. I spend a lot of time thinking about specific color theory and how, um, you know, really just ruminating about if life were, you know, if, if I could see life through this completely different color pattern, how would that make me feel versus a completely different color pattern? So uh, this is St. Michael, and originally um, it started out as this, um, which was a sketch that I did uh, in pen and ink outside of St. Michael's Hospital at, uh, uh, it's the Ministry Healthcare. And ultimately I wanted, I just wanted to make something that I hadn't done in a while. I, hadn't, I haven't been doing a lot of figural work uh, lately so I, I thought well this is a beautiful image f for me and it doesn't have any outside influence and I, I think that's an important thing is to understand where you're being influenced from. The thing that I hadn't anticipated when I made this or when I started painting it was that um, the night that I transferred this image onto the canvas was also the night that my cousin Michael in Florida shot himself and um, I'm not a I'm not a particularly superstitious person, but that was a connection that I couldn't really ignore. And, and it wasn't until four days later that I got a call from my sister late at night when I was walking with a friend, and um, she told me, you know, Michael's gone. He's he took his life, and I I didn't know Michael nearly as well as I should have. I mean, I'm the youngest in my family. I, there's a lot of people who have come and gone that I haven't had a chance to interact with, but I've had glimmers and glances of Michael throughout my life. And um, it's just, it's hard when, when blood takes itself.
So this was my way of, of, of releasing that and helping myself understand that, that death in the family and, and trying to comprehend and, and cope with it. So the decisions I made from that moment on um, were all in some way geared towards making this about Michael, or at least the situation from my standpoint. I mean, Michael's been a fisherman his whole life, and Michael's brother, Robert, um, and his friends buried his ashes at sea in the Caribbean um, so that, you know, because that's where Michael's happy. They, went, they took him to one of his favorite fishing islands. And so what you saw me um, doing as, as that artistic decision came into play was I put this statue 30 feet underwater because that's, you know, that's it. That's where he wants to be. That's where his memory is strongest. I'm hesitant to show this to my family or to the people who really knew Michael well um, because this, is, this was a personal thing for me and, and I don't expect it to be um, necessarily a comforting painting for them and I don't, I don't want them to feel discomforted by seeing it, but it was something that I needed to do for myself. This entire world we've created is all design. Everything is design in some way. Everything is art in some way. Um, you know, human creativity is a really incredible thing. And I, I don't think that art is limited to just, you know, paint on the palette or even graphic design or um, building structures. I mean, it's, it's really everywhere. I mean, honest to God, if you don't value art, you don't value life and I mean, God, that's a really sad way to live. There's mud on the floor from where I walked in. And there's blood on my hands for what I've done. And there's a cold, steady rain that comes falling down. It matches my footsteps. Gun. 